management of the NDDC has debunked fresh rumors of financial impropriety in the Niger Delta Development Commission. The management in a statement by its Director of Corporate Services, Charles Odili, described the rumors as a rehash of the allegations which had led the National Assembly on May 5 to order a probe of the administration of uh, Kemebra Dikumo Ponde, the Acting Managing Director of the Commission. The two chambers of the National Assembly had a few weeks ago held investigative hearings to probe the allegations of corruption in the NDDC. Due to criticism of the operations of the Commission, President Mohamed Obari had in 2019 ordered a forensic audit of the operations of the organization from 2001 to 2019. Joining us live is Udengs Eradiri, former President Ijo Youth Council. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, good morning. The NDDC has uh, unfortunately been in the news for all the wrong reasons. How do you interpret the development from that commission? Well, I think that uh, first of all, the uh, foundation of the NDDC is faulty from the inception when the NDDC was uh, um, um, instituted by the Obasanjo administration. The idea generally was to deal with issues concerning development in the Niger Delta. But unfortunately, while the government was, was trying to put the, the, the body together, they, 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 they brought in political considerations. Look at the, the uh, Northeast Development Commission, for instance. You have people like Dan Juma, the Dangotes, are the ones who are uh, 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 managers of that board. But in the Niger Delta, it is used to settle failed politicians. When a politician fails an election, you use the NDDC to settle it. What are you expecting? Whether it's PDP or APC, it doesn't matter. The idea itself of setting up the, the commission was a good one. But in implementation, you begin to use it to settle the failed politicians. So anyone who fails an election goes there and wants to use it to settle himself. And that has been the, the, the history of the NDDC till date. So what is happening today uh, uh, for me is pathetic because it shows the lack of leadership in Nigeria. Because if you if we had the functional leadership in Abuja, by now the action should have been taken for people to be to to fear to get into corrupt practices in office. The, the by NDDC alone. Go to yeah. other parastatas in Nigeria, you find out that because of the lack of leadership and monitoring from Abuja. Everybody is just having a field day in whichever uh, MDA that they find themselves. So, so far, Nigeria is actually in a pathetic situation. As, yes. Let me ask you. So the, the leadership has debunked the allegations against them. What further demands should we be making of them? Or is it enough to claim innocence? Um, and that's it. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think the ball lies on the table of the president. The president at this point should be taking the right actions that will ensure that we see the truth behind what is going on. The truth is that uh, the Ponde-led administration just started. Most of the activities that you are talking about started years before Ponde came into office. So there, there's usually this saying in Nigeria that corruption will always fight back when you try to to uh, um, investigate the system. I'm not saying that those who are involved, who are involved, even whether from the Ministry of Niger Delta or, or the NDDC hands are clean, but the truth is that there is a power play going on. Some people, because of the probe that is going on, are trying to discredit the IMC to the best of their ability in order to prove to, to hide their own activities. The truth is that NDDC itself is a rotten institution, and if that institution must be dealt with, then the leadership must be serious. Once the head is serious, then we will know whether it is the corruption fighting back or it is uh, uh, the true uh, investigation that is going on. But I like, like I always say, um, why not look at where the problem is, leadership? If we have the right leadership, then the right things will be done, the proper investigation will be done. You can't set up an IMC instead of setting up the entire board. It's like NMPC. NMPC have had forensic uh, investigations going on, but it didn't stop the president from setting up the NMPC board. The, the, the NSS office have been under investigation, but it didn't stop the president from appointing persons in that place. The Northeast Development Commission also have issues of corruption, but the board is completely set up. We have always maintained that set up the board according to the law. Because what the presidency is also doing is also an infringement on, on, on the law. So if you are setting up an IMC infringing on the law, uh, who now says that what you are going to be doing, uh, what the IMC is doing is now wrong 
from what you are doing. If you must come to equity, come with clean hands. Now, let's, Set up let's the board also... according to the, the law so that things can move properly. Yeah. You, you are, of, of course, a former president of the Ijo Youth Council. When a commission like this that is meant to cater for the needs of the people turns out to be the direct opposite, what trust is left and, and should any, you know, be reposed on it? How disappointed also, you know, are the people um, in this situation? Look, I, I, I always talk about the failure of leadership. What are the priorities of our people today? Because of the kind of, of foundation that we have laid in this country, even the priorities of, of people have changed. The expectations of our people have changed. People are all looking for who will come and give them money, irrespective of how this money comes. I tell you, we are disappointed in the Niger Delta, especially with the fact that President Buhari talked about, in his agenda, in his leadership, he talked about dealing with issues in the Niger Delta. But unfortunately, the very course for which he will be using to deal with the Niger Delta, the Amnesty Office, the Niger Delta uh, uh, Ministry, and the NDDC. These are the vehicles for which President Buhari is supposed to reach out to the Niger Delta. Unfortunately, these vehicles are immersed in corruption, and yet the president is silent. And they say silent is consent. If he's quiet, and then the people can no longer, because if our people get up now and say, we, this NDDC, we are tired of it, then you will see bloodletting, because most of these politicians, the next thing they will call the military in, call the police in, and then they begin to shoot at the people. It is the failure of leadership that our people are suffering from. And that is why I always put the bulk on the table of the president. If the president believes in anti-corruption, if the president believes in, his, in the rule of law, then he must sit up and begin to monitor these institutions so that they can serve the purpose for which they were, they, they were instituted. All right, and of course, again, the NDDC has been termed a cesspool of corruption um, uh, by many in the light of all these allegations. Do you think that, you know, there will be um, actual remedies to this situation? Um, from what you have, you've stated, you know, it really, really depends on political will and, of course, leadership. Um, do you think that we will get the answers that we seek as Nigerians? Well, uh, you know what it is. Look at the National Assembly. The National Assembly that uh, gave... Uh, uh, I was wondering when I saw the speaker saying that uh, between 24 to 48 hours. I don't understand what that means. I, I was expecting him to say in 24 hours you should publish your list or in 48 hours you should publish your list. But after that... Uh, uh, resolution from the House. The next thing is that they are going on recess. Next thing they are saying that the, the management will not even come on board. There is a lot. For me, I have lost hope. I don't think that Nigeria, the way it is uh, construed, will be able to get to any logical conclu conclusion in anything that we get involved in. Look, at, because of leadership, once the leader is not true to himself, then everybody can misbehave. Come to Abuja and see what's happening in ministries. You will weep for this country. Look at what is happening in the security sector. Are we not tired? There is already a, an allegation of 48 million barrels that have been stolen and sold to their pockets. So at the end of the day, are you sure that we are going to see anything at the light at the end of the tunnel? I, for me, I don't believe that uh, anything positive will come out because... Uh, the leadership itself is not expressing itself in that direction. And so at the end of the day, it will be another jamboree where some, some people will use the National Assembly to intimidate others. At the end of the day, they will settle themselves and will move on. Because Nigerians are docile. Nigerians are people who, any little thing, before you know it, you forget them, we go, we go carry on like that. If what is happening in this country, one-tenth of it happening, Burundi, all these small, small African countries. Look, what, what is causing the crisis in Mali that Nigeria is going to settle? It's, it's just simple issues of rigging of elections and not being true to the people. It's why there is a political statement in that country. But in Nigeria, everything goes. We will, this one will come and go, and life will continue. Right. But it's unfortunate because our country is going to collapse in no distant time. Udangs Eradiri, uh, former president of the Joy Youth Council, thank you so much for you know this conversation. Um, of course, um, you seem to be very, very passionate about um, where we are and where we're headed. We would definitely love to speak with you again. Thank you.